Oh, this is the warm up? Yeah. Whenever you guys are ready. This is a warm up here. Cheers. Ooh. Episode 12, The Uncensored Episode, <laughs> because it's going to get good. We have here Miss Cindy. Woo! It's going to get crazy. I'm telling you right now. But she is finally off of her powerlifting program for now because she goes to the gym sometimes. Sometimes? Sometimes, sometimes. Um, let's get into right. What got you into the gym? Because... Gym for girls is you work. Sorry to say, a lot of girls is workout back, legs, abs. Call it a day and cardio, but you don't really just <laughs> just do that. Yeah, no. So I got into powerlifting. I got exposed to it back in 2017, and then I didn't actually get fully into it until I want to say like 2000. 19 end of 2019 um it wasn't until i first got i don't know I've, I've always watched it i wanted to do it i've seen girls lift some crazy amount of weight um i think it was when i watched this girl lift like over 300 pounds and i was like i want to deadlift that amount like i want to do that um and at that point i didn't know, even know like that was possible i was just like there's no way like that looks so impossible to do and it wasn't until like over time i was like you know what like Let's give it a go. F it. Like, let's do it. And that kind of got me, I think, the exposure from my first competition. I signed up. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't even have a coach. And I was like, you know what? Like, let's give it a shot. Let's see how it goes. Um, and that kind of, over time, I've developed a love for, like, lifting heavy and being able to break the stigma that women or females can't lift, like, crazy amounts of weights and in this sport you see girls lifting like 400 pounds like Jesus. just some crazy crazy amounts Mo that's more than most <laughs> guys in the gym man <laughs> yeah so that kind of developed over time but i initially had a background of bodybuilding it wasn't like it was more of like amateur bodybuilding it wasn't ever anything like professional yeah um but it was more I saw myself lifting like I always wanted to lift heavy, so that's kind of what started that that route and stuff. Um, but I guess like when it came to like bodybuilding, I started doing kind of starting the gym because I had a lot of trauma growing up, and um, throughout like the years, I had like like built up anger, so I learned to um, use that anger towards. You know, whenever I work out, whenever I do that, um, that pretty much kind of led me that pathway. Dang. So it was like your <clears throat> your gateway, right? The yeah. The gym was like your gateway. Getting under all that weight, how you said, not normal for a girl to lift 200, over 200 pounds, 300 pounds in any exercise besides, like, I've seen hip thrust. But you do it, do it all. Yeah. Squat, so bench back just everything <laughs> everything, everything that yeah. a normal what you would say a guy would only do you do it because of the industry of that sport itself mm -hmm. and yeah. <laughs> how yeah. much so how much that for the ones that are watching your fans the people that follow you how much time do you dedicate to that craft alone Jeez. um so in the beginning i started with six days a week um, usually it takes about three to four hours sometimes just because of stretching and mobility work beforehand. Um, I cut it down to about four days a week now. Mm -hmm. And that's only because I have so many other things going on that I, you know, that was the best way for me to have like optimal strength and then also be able to still have my life outside of that. So you have a full-time job? <laughs> yes. So I have a... Well, I work full time. Um, I'm in pharmaceutical sales, and then um, I have some little side hustles. We'll talk about that. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have some little side hustles um, and just money I make on the side. Dang! So you go from your full time job, you eat during your breaks or your, when you're driving, and then you head out to the gym and spend another three, four hours in the gym. Yes. Yeah, so my schedule looks like from eight to five, I work full time. 
And then in between um, eight to five, luckily I kind of work remotely. So I get the opportunity to kind of like, let's say if I use 10 minutes of my day into putting it to like other businesses that I have. So I use that time wisely. Um, And then I get home like around five and I am at the gym at around like six, six thirty, and I don't get home till like 1030. So (laughs) the main question, what keeps you disciplined? What keeps you going in that hectic schedule that you have? Yeah, so for me, it's not really motivation, but it's to kind of show the world that it's possible. Hmm. Um, Like I kind of mentioned before, and I don't want to fully touch everything because I know it's going to be a very long story if I do. Um, But I actually grew up in a very low-income family. Um, My parents immigrated uh, here, I believe, when they were like 20, 21. Damn. So I saw their struggles, and I saw like how they struggled throughout the years. And I mean, growing up, I didn't have everything, but I was I was always happy and I had, you know, things going for me. But over the years, like I did go through a lot of trauma. So like I always tell people, you know, I've been a victim of I was molested when I was like a young girl. Um, I've been a victim of sexual assault throughout my years. And not only that, but like I actually lost my sister at a very young age. So that was a very like eye opening moment for me. Yeah. And I wanted to show the world that it's not even though. You go through so much trauma, it's how you overcome it. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it's been more, how do I put it? Like, it's been more of being able to surpass that and still say, you know what? I went through all this and I can still keep going. And I'm going to show you that throughout, like, all my setbacks, I'm still here. Yeah. Yeah. Biggest thing. I'm still <laughs> here after everything. And that's, and I've seen it, you know, sadly over the years where people, use their trauma that they've gone it gone through and use it against themselves like dude i went through this there's no way i can do this anymore there's no way i can overcome it there's no way i can but you did it you've been doing it and you are doing it like recently just moved out Mm -hmm. you made it happen finally yes (laughs) you know you made it happen but i've met i met you during the pandemic because you created your own gym that was insane for being a home gym yeah and it was a gateway for a lot of the we would call them the squad you know <laughs> yep. phil me paul that was there um but you did that out of your own pocket yes out of your own grind mm-hmm. your side hustles all my side hustles but so what i what i'll get into is you did all that there was a point just as touch on it briefly there was a point where you lost almost everything financially Mm -hmm. because of a business venture you had and it took a turn and you it fell through and you had to find your way out of what is it like debt or all that stuff that you were saying last time yeah so when i was 21 um i obviously wanted to like my goal was always to let me re- I want to retire my parents. I want my parents to be able to enjoy, you know, the rest of their lives and not have to work a day in their life. So I actually started a business when I was 21 with a really good friend of mine, Bianca. And what ended up happening is it just <clears throat> let's just say a 21 year old that's naive doesn't know much about business. And I just didn't have the right mentorship. And I let other people really guide my, guide my path. Mm-hmm. And what ended up happening there was that I started to become a person I, I didn't like, that I, that I, it wasn't me. And I let my ego get the best of me. And I started to feel like I was on top because as a 21 year old, I'm making more than um, someone that has a degree. And that really messed with my head. And I was just like, oh, well, I'm better than you. I'm better than you. And I just, I wasn't humble anymore. I, I don't even, I don't even recognize the person I was at that point. Yeah. Um, so... I don't even know if it was the universe, if it was God putting me in my place. And at some point I lost it all. I lost, I went 20, 25,000 in debt. I had lawsuits um, coming against me. And I literally had, I remember till this day, I was pumping gas one day and I only had $20 in my bank account. Not knowing how I was going to pay my bills, not knowing how I was going to do anything at that point. Jesus. And yeah. you bounced back. And I bounced back. Yeah, it took several years to bounce back. Because no no one in my family knew what happened. My parents didn't know what happened. Um, I didn't want to worry anyone. And I wanted to make sure I came back out of this um, on my own. Mm -hmm. And it took years. I didn't finish paying everything back until 
I want to say 2019, so recently. Are you one of those, <clears throat> as you just said, not, a, not everybody knew what you were going through. Are you one of those people that just hold everything inside because it's your problem and you don't want anybody else to know? Or is it one of those things like, I know what I need to do and I'm going to do it and that's about it. Like, I don't need to speak about it. It was like a mixture of both. Like, it was, I know what I need to do and I, I'm going to do it. But then it was also, I didn't want to disappoint mm. um, the people around me or I didn't want them to worry. Yeah. That, you know, with something that was my problem and no one else's. Damn. So you're bounced back. Now you, <clears throat> you, you went 25 grand in debt. You finally paid it off 2019. What is there something you did in 2019 that was different that put you in that position? Or it was just like you were saving, you were you were working. What what was it that was about 2019 that helped you get out of that that hole you would say? Um it was more so that I was working because I was still going to school. I still wanted to just finish school um and still get my bachelor's and Throughout that time, I was like, if I'm going to go back to school and I'm going to graduate, I'm going to do it without debt while yeah. also paying off debt that I have. And at the time, I was literally working full time. Whatever way I can make money, I would do it. Yeah. It came to a point where I was at T-Mobile um, selling cables on the side. I would find ways to just make some extra money. Yes, <laughs> yes. Make some extra money as I could and just like ways to generate extra income aside from what I had going on. Dang. Mm, let, I'm trying to figure out a way to ask this. What is one thing, because we spoke about it in the last episode with Mia about guys putting down females, empowerment, you know, you need us to in order to do this and do that. You're not that way. Knowing who you are, you're not one of those that says, yeah, you need a guy to do this and do that. And if a guy speaks down on you, you don't hold back. What is, what, what, Speaking, like we're talking to each other right now, but speaking to the females and the women that listen to this now, what do you, how do you go about that? You know, because you have to go and I'm sure you've gone through a lot of different scenarios where, you know, guys put you down or try to put you down and you're you're not one to hold back. Yeah, so... Should I should I bring it up now? <laughs> should I bring up the, the Un- secret now? <laughs> Boom! Uncensored. What's your business? What's your side hustle that you do? So it took me a while to actually figure out how to, you know, like not feel threatened by a man or feel like, you know what, I deserve to be in the spot and you don't, just because you're a man, you don't, you know, you don't deserve, you have no right to talk to me the way you do, Correct. no matter what your opinion is. No matter can, how much money and no matter or, what your standard yeah, is. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter to me because at the end of the day, I don't need you to make that money. I don't need you in any way. I can handle my own. I have been for years. So there's, I don't need anything from you in specific, like if we're talking specifics, but um, I actually learned this. um, I guess it took me a while to learn it, but I actually have an OnlyFans. So that's kind of how I learned it over time and how to take my power back. Mm -hmm. Um, When I first started that business, it was very weird, very strange. I was very like, half in half out and I was obviously not making like crazy amount of money because I was like I kind of want to do it but then I kind of don't or I kinda, yeah. I'm kind of scared of what people think and for a while it was just like back and forth back and forth and it wasn't until recently in December this year last year um I was like you know what like I don't know why I was so worried about ever finding a guy that was going to accept me for that and I had to hide it and I had to just not be myself be like a, di- a hidden yeah. person yeah and then I was just like you know what like if and you know, like later on like you know what if I do this I want to find a genuine person that's going to like me for me and everything I do because that's how I come I come as a whole package yeah um so I no longer am threatened if a guy's like oh I'm not going to date you because you have it cool everyone is you know has their own opinion right. everyone is right to have their own opinion that's fine with me yeah. and we can move on from that and um it, i didn't start feeling that way until i stopped dating for a while and then i went back on only fans in december and the moment i shifted my mindset the money just started coming in what do you mean shift your mindset um at the fact that i was no longer afraid to talk about it i was very open about it i told people about it and i just i stopped caring so we, we've had that conversation and I 
want to say the conversation that a lot of people at this point that you've heard OnlyFans is not intrigued. What is your purpose on OnlyFans? Because everybody sees it, you know, in a more derogative way for females to do it. And to the knowledge, guys do it also. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that go in that um, industry, in the adult industry. And I mean, to each their own, but I enjoy it. Like, I enjoy having that dominance, being confident, and then it's all under my own rules. No one is telling me you have to do this because the moment you tell me you have to do this and you give me some type of like, no, you're a whore, you're this, you're blah, 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 I can easily block you. That, that doesn't phase me. Um, just because you're on there, you have no right to talk back to me and I will block you. Um, you can't bully me on there because I will block you. I don't need your money. There's plenty of other people out there. Um, and there's has to be that mutual respect. And a lot of your fans know this. And then there's a few that don't. And they feel that they can come in here and judge you and tell you things. And I've gotten a lot of hate messages. And you just have to be, have really thick skin for it. Yeah. Um, it's not an easy business. What people think it's like, oh, if you make one, you're going to make a lot of money. It's not true at all. You really have... It's like you're treating it like a business. Like you have to promote. You have to... Be on it constantly, create content. It takes a lot of time that people don't realize it does take to, to actually be successful in it. So you have a full-time job, <clears throat> full-time part job at the gym, <laughs> and you do this side hustle. Yes. That has now gotten you into a position of not just money, mm -hmm. but of, of confidence. Yeah. So it's definitely built my confidence a lot where I feel really confident as a woman, as a female. Um, and I know what I like, I know what I want, and not only that, but it just gives me that freedom to have extra income coming in because it's not the only business I have, I have other businesses, and it gives me that freedom to, you know what, it pays my rent, and then the extra goes into other investments that I have. I have long-term investments, I have another business in photo booths that I do photo booth rentals, so it's not the only thing I have, but it gives me that, it opens up um, other gateways for me to make more money. It gave you the power. Mm -hmm. to do other things besides just being straight into you need a job you pay rent you go to sleep you wake up and you do it all over again Correct. you're i wake up i go to my job i go do what has brought sanity to myself which is the gym get out of that work environment in the gym preparing for a competition to a, another business venture and how you just said the photo booth another business venture so it's just everything would you say everything just ties in perfectly in a sense yeah everything ties in and um i want to say like with like everything going on like with only fans and everything pretty much in general it's not only helping me but me seeing other people like i've gotten so many messages from girls saying like girls saying like i want to try it i want to do it and it's not because they need the money like a lot of times it's not because you need the money but People don't realize how fun it is to create the content, to get dressed up and look pretty and like just experience it. Like it's a whole so what different would, world. So what would you tell, uh, you know, for the girls that are tuned in? Because this episode obviously is going to air uh, the following week coming, which is in April, April 2nd, I believe. The first one we did with, with Mia, the first, I was the second technically female on this podcast, but gave us that insight on vulnerability and everything, got views right away. What would you tell the girls that tune into this one, your fans, your followers, girls that tune into the podcast that follow us? What would you tell them if they come ask you, hey, I want to do OnlyFans, but I don't know how or why should I do it? Um, well, first of all, is really finding out, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable being vulnerable? You're putting yourself in a position where you, there's no going back after that. And you have to have that thick skin. You have to know what you're doing. You have to be fully 100% mindful that you're ready to dive in. Because once you're doing it, you're going to have to be 100%. There's no, I'm halfway, half, half out. You can go that route, but just know you're not going to make any money. And one thing I do want to say is like, Make sure if you are doing it, reach out to other girls that are doing it. Get insight on, you know, what it, you know, what it, it entails. Like, what do you, what do other girls do? Hell, just reach out to me and I'll kind of go over any information you need to. And I'm really open about everything I do. So um, there's no secret behind it. I'm, 
you know, I'm honestly there to genuinely help girls. I actually have a group chat and um, where I kind of mentor and coach girls on how to do it. And if they're not ready to do it, I'm not going to force you to do it. I'm just going to give you an insight of what it is. And then it's up to you. Your It's your decision at the end of the day. It probably sounds funny. So you post pictures and lingerie be you with sports bra all that stuff that we already see on instagram mm-hmm. you just get paid for it yeah <laughs> i basically just get paid for it i get paid for a lot of crazy stuff um a lot of it everything is virtual i never meet anyone in person and um nothing of my content ever involves a boy because i i i'm there to do it for myself and i'm not there it's not like the pornography world at all um, Only if you would want it to. If it's an option, let's say you're with a significant other or you have a, a someone that you trust to do content with you, by all means, go ahead and do it. I know girls that do it, and I have girls that can coach you on that too. But I personally prefer not to go that route. Um, I do it for me, and I like enjoy the confidence of it. But you're crazy things from... There's a lot of men that don't even want any type of nudity. It's just simply having someone to talk to. Um, I actually charge for the girl, the virtual girlfriend experience, which I made up <laughs> and I charged them per day. Jeez. So there was like a week, um, I had a guy giving me an allowance of $400 a month and that allowance, it was just for me to talk to him every day. Good morning. Good night. How's your day going? Simple. Like that's it. Um, they really don't, a lot of these men don't really want anything crazy. They just want to feel love. They want to feel like someone is, you know, there for them. Yeah. I've sold um, used underwear. You can sell used underwear online. Um, there's even, there's been points where like, I think a guy asked for a video of me saying, get the heck, like stop being a lazy ass and get to the gym. <laughs> like just random stuff. <laughs> like you would think that it's not even, you would think it's like the craziest things that they ask for and it's super basic stuff half the time. Jesus. So you're, we're not gonna throw a number out there, but you're making pretty decent amount now because you went pretty much all in into it. Yeah. So with going all in, do you think going all in on any business venture gives that turnout? Yes, you definitely have to put 100% into everything. Um, I learned that lesson now because I was putting more time into um, this business versus my photo booth business. So my photo booth business is right now struggling. So I'm working to even it out where I'm marketing both the same way. Um, and I and I noticed that over time, which is something I'm working on. But you really have to put in 100% in everything you do. Because if not, it's not going to get anywhere. The same thing goes with like work, with if you're trying to go to the gym. Like you have to 100% fully commit to it. So going piggybacking off of that, women in this What's going on now in this world, how ruthless this world is, and it's talked down upon any gender and everything. Speaking on what, on what you had to experience and what you're going through now and previous, what do you tell a woman trying to go into business for her own or trying to be confident on her own and be, you know, just on her own without needing anybody in particular? Like, what kind of mindset do you think that you had to go through that would probably help them go through it, go through something similar or different? Um, what was your mindset? So what was your mindset trying to transition through handling everything you're handling now and being that strong, independent woman to have that title independent? Definitely. Okay. So I, I was always very business minded, But there came a time where, you know, I was with my ex at the time and he at the obviously was going to school for something, you know, and to be a doctor. And what ended up happening is he kind of always comforted me throughout the year saying, you know, he was going to be there for me. And I believed it. And I really did believe, you know, this person's going to be here for the rest of my life. We're together for a very long time. But you know what? Like I had my biggest like realization right after we broke up and I was just like, well, like, I, we had plans to move out. We had plans to do all this together and now we're not. And now I kind of have to figure that out on my own and figure out that I'm, uh, no matter what, even if you're with a significant partner, always, always like think for yourself and build yourself because 
anything can happen unexpectedly. Short, life's too short for you to rely on someone else or rely on someone else financially. So transition now into an important, very important topic, mental health. Do you have your moments <laughs> throughout everything you've been doing? Yes. Yeah, so um, this actually goes back. I actually had, because I had a lot of trauma growing up, I never really addressed it. Um, uh it was kind of like a battle within myself i was very reckless self-sabotaging myself throughout the years and not only that i actually became an alcoholic just last year during the pandemic i suffered a lot um i ended up having an accident not a car accident but just know i bashed my face into a wall and it was just i had to i ended up in urgent care and that's when i realized there was an issue because it would if it wasn't because of that and it that affecting me in powerlifting where it just like I couldn't go to the gym for a week it affected my numbers it affected and I had to start all over again and that made me realize like you have an issue like you're not realizing it yourself but you have an issue and throughout the years like I had a lot of like suicide thoughts I almost committed suicide when I was about 16 and it was just like an ongoing thing and I didn't realize I had an issue until just recently last year when I finally went to therapy. So I finally talked to someone about, you know, what happened in my childhood, what happened, what happened like growing up and um, how I needed help. So we've been working on, you know, how to recognize my emotions, how to recognize patterns, why I do certain things um, and how it just correlates back and forth. Dang. But it's, uh, this, we're already almost there. Jeez. Yeah, I was like, damn, we've been going for we've been going for a while, but take a little little in little break. We'll come right back. We're back, but we need to warm up. So we're gonna take a little toast with the some terramana. Here it is. Ooh. That was That's smooth. It's killing corona right there already. Just kidding. Um, now, second part. Do you think it's important to believe in having the right set of people around you? Yes. Um, yeah. So, I've had my fair and um, my fair share of people that were very toxic, that weren't motivating, and um, were just kind of dragging me down with them. And, you know, I noticed I, I ended up having like really bad habits with them. So it really is, it really does come down to really eliminating people that are not benefiting your life in any way or you're not learning from. Um, I've over the years like cut down the amount of, you know, like my, my circle is actually starting to get a lot smaller now, but it's with people that correlate with like my mind and my, like my mindset and my goals and you know, I have friends that are more in the powerlifting side and I have friends who are more on like the entrepreneur side and I have friends who are, um, you know, just the entrepreneur side, but then it's not, it it just varies. Like every, everyone is a little different, but, um, they compliment. Yeah. I feel like it's important to really identify, you know, the people you want to hang around with. And you also want to have people in your life that motivate you and um, can share some knowledge with you, which is something that I am always looking for and I always wanna learn from everyone. Um, Just because we're all different and we all have different um, avenues that we're going in and stuff like that. So with that being said, um, you had mentioned earlier to the gym, you started powerlifting. When you got serious, you actually got a coach. Did you go through a, a certain amount of coaches or was your first one the only one and you said, hey, this is it? working for me and that was it or did you go through like some trials (laughs) (laughs) i went through some trials um when i did my first competition i did deadlift only because when i signed up i remember i was listening to the gary v show the podcast and i was like at my office yeah and i was sitting there and he was talking about like if you're never gonna do if you don't just sign up do something in your life you're never gonna start like it's you're always gonna be saying like whenever i'm ready whenever i'm ready but you're never gonna be ready for anything and It wasn't until I listened to that podcast, I was sitting there and I signed up for a competition. At the time, I could not do squats because of my knee injury, but I was like, I can deadlift, so I did that. 
I had no idea what I was doing. I had no coach. And I remember reaching out to people on Instagram like I was looking for a coach. Um, And then I don't know how it ended up being from a friend to a friend. And someone introduced me to Paul and Bishop. And um, (laughs) shout out to Paul and Bishop. Shout out to Ape. A podcast. <laughs> yeah, so someone introduced me to them, and they are the most amazing, most motivating that's people. Um, just super genuine. And they helped me out through my whole prep. Like, it was so different the fact that I didn't have to ask them. Like, they just literally just showed up for me they, and helped me out through. Out, yeah. yeah, they just came out, supported, and they helped me out because they know how much work it takes to even just do a whole competition. And I didn't really have a coach. Then it wasn't until probably close to my second powerlifting meet. Um, Right before that, I I tried looking for a coach. I hired one online. Um, It didn't work out. Like it was just, it just didn't work out. And I was like, okay, whatever, trial and error. I'll figure that out like later on as I go. And I think that's how I met, ended up meeting Ari. Someone introduced me to Ari. So he's my current coach. Um, Yeah, we've had our trial and errors, but I eventually like we've been working since my first full power competition and definitely since then like I've been working with him because now he knows like how I work he knows what I need um so it's honestly it's helped a lot because they've all three of them have actually helped me so much through the whole powerlifting journey because it's it's a lot of work how it's, much how much time has Ari like dedicated to really know you as is technically as athlete he won't say it but technically as athlete like do you think there is there's a certain amount that a coach needs to dedicate to them yes so a lot of time like you wouldn't think that you just you know it's just building your program like you just tell them your program like it's it's not just that like he's gotten to know me as like you know how i'm eating if i'm if i'm eating enough if i'm sleeping enough if i'm resting enough how i feel that morning so he literally checks up on me every morning how i'm feeling if i feel any pain in my body um not only that but he's there at the gym just making sure that if i need any help if i have any questions um making sure i'm executing every lift uh, accordingly and it, it's a lot of work it, it's yeah. it, it takes more than an hour like if, no doubt if, if or 30 about, minutes or 30 minutes like if we're talking about personal trainers it, it's different it's way different from that a coach is literally there throughout your whole life they know everything they know everything about you from your mental health to what you eat to what you know if you're sleeping enough like it's not just yeah. a you're paying um a, a personal trainer for your time to work out because yeah they may know you for that amount of time but they don't know how your body works they don't know what you do outside of that and a coach definitely takes your time and they're pretty much there throughout your entire, um, pretty they look, much life. They look at it for like the long term. It's more long term, yeah, definitely. Dang, and only reason I I bring that up is because even me and him don't coach in the same industry, like uh, powerlifting. I coach high school sports, but is I do agree that it takes more than just showing up here's what we need to do today and that's it is just like no you need to know who you're coaching you need to know how they learn and how they work what's going on outside that can affect them mm-hmm. in here and once we sh- you i would say showboat our talents competition all right this is what we need to do next for us to get better next time and not just Hit me back up when you got more money in your pocket yeah. and, and we'll get to it. It's definitely not a transaction. He's been through all my mental breakdowns when I cried at the gym. Um, dude, he's even brought me food one day because I just had a terrible week when I was moving and I decided to move three, when I was three weeks out of my competition. I don't know what I was thinking, yeah. um, but like he's there for me throughout the entire time and it just, I feel 100% like I can give... You know, like, I can trust them with my program, with what I do, with my competition. Because it's not just about, oh, hand me over the money. That's it. We're done. It's more about, like, you know, how are you feeling? He's checking up on me all the time. Making sure that, you know, we're progressing. Making it personal. And it's it's a very, it has to be very yeah. personal. And that's the one thing, that's the one, number one thing I always recommend to someone. Like, you may hire a personal trainer. Cool, but that's only for 30 minutes, an hour. That's not going to... And sometimes those personal trainers 
they take the test, they're certified, they don't know what it really takes <laughs> to be in there. Yep. Like that, that I'm not certified. I haven't competed up to this point. But there are still some things that I learned, how you said, from Bishop mm -hmm. and Paul and Ari and, you know, now Mike and Chino. Like, yeah. it takes this. You got to do it this way. Maybe this way doesn't work for you, but we have this option. And it's just learning the movements and the craft, specifically the craft, in order to be able to teach someone else. And I know Ari has said it. If to be a good coach or to be a good mentor... I'm able to coach you in it, and you have to be able to coach somebody else in it also. Yep. And that's how I know you grasped everything I told you yep. and, and showed you. Because every before I do an execution, he basically tells me, hey, um, I think you should try it this way. And this is why I think you should try it. So he gives me an entire explanation of why I should do it that way yeah. and why he thinks it's going to work that way. Um, and not just hey and we're not done just, in 20 minutes yes we got we got a good one exactly so that's like the number one reason why i'm just like i love the style that he coaches because it's not just hey this has worked for another athlete so it's gonna work for you no like he tries it himself and then he's just like hey i think this one might work but i want to make sure so give me some feedback of how you feel um but this is why i'm telling you this might work for you so he gives yeah. you a whole explanation of why he thinks it will work but nice. um a like as opposed to like a personal trainer it's different like you're you're trusting you're paying a lot of money to trust someone with your own like body like that's a lot like that's a lot that's a lot of trust in someone because it's like you're for them to not even get to know you yeah and it's 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 insane and i find it insane like there don't get me wrong there's a lot of good personal trainers out yeah. there but then there's a batch of personal trainers that don't even have a clue what they're doing about the movement about how to properly execute if the if your client is having any pain with how they should address the pain how they go about mobility work it's a lot of work and it's like you don't get that from a personal trainer versus when you hire a coach and you're doing all this and shout out to you and you know my my hat off to you because you do training powerlifting training make it simple gym training with owning a full-time job, owning side hustles, moving out, having your own rent, having your own bills, and you still find the time to dedicate your time, your free time, quote unquote, to this craft. Mm -hmm. So we go back into the, the same question that I asked before, who do you have around you and how it's affected you? Is it people that just motivate you is it people that tell you not to do certain things? Is it people that, you know, say, hey, you know what? It's not going to work, but go ahead and try it. Like, did you have to cut certain people off? And if you did, why? I definitely had to cut a lot of people off because a lot of people were, you know, with this sport, you really have to be very mindful of how you spend your time. Um, you obviously can go out to drink every weekend. That's definitely not ideal. Some people still do it. Not me. But, <laughs> but it's not ideal. Like for your yeah. recovery time, it's not ideal. If you you're have, per trying to perfect you're, that. Yeah, and especially if you're on prep for a competition, there's no way. Like I would not recommend it. Really, really focus your time because for a lot of these competitions, you're paying a lot of money. Yeah. Um, not necessarily a lot of money for for it but like you're spending a lot of money on coaches you're spending a lot of money on equipment and then also the competition itself and it's i had to cut people over time because they wouldn't they couldn't understand the fact that i was busy that weekend because you know what i'm resting i'm recovering um for because i have prep or i'm recovering because you know what i'm really taking it serious and i want my numbers to increase over time i don't want to you know um let my progress just die down or it affect me yeah so it's not the same like i don't have the time available to just go out and get drunk on a random weekend and a lot of my friend i had a lot of friends that were more of the they wanted to be out on the weekend and it's like it i can't do that like i have so many other things Priorities. going on it's not it's not just you know work nine to five like i have a business i have multiple businesses i also have powerlifting like that takes a lot of my time dang so 2021 you you explained it the last year you had a you went through the whole experience of um being alcoholic and what the whole pandemic brought and it brought a lot of shit to everybody 
how we uh, how I explained it uh, in the other episodes. But 2021, you you entered and you went all out, and we spoke about this. Now, what do you have looking forward? And now, what do you you have people tuning in because you you're working, you're you're doing things on your free time that others was like, dude, just rest. But you're just like, <laughs> nope, I mean, doing that. Yeah. So actually, my own coach told me like I had no idea how many things you had going on. And that to me is wild, <laughs> um, but I love it. Like that keeps me motivated, just staying busy and going about my day and just seeing progress in myself, not only in the gym, at work, but also like throughout my businesses. Um, on top of that, I am starting a, um, not everything is released yet. Everything is still in the pre-recording it's in the stages. Works. It's in the works. It's in the yeah. works. Um, but we actually, I actually have two podcasts, one with, um, a couple of my friends where we kind of are a little bit more uncensored and we talk about, you know, topics that no one wants to talk about and everyone's just very taboo and hidden about. And then I have, uh, my own podcast where it's a solo podcast. That one's going to be targeted more towards women. Um, and it's going to vary from women who are interested in business, women who are powerlifting and have their own um, thing going on. What's your point in that one? Um, that one's just to motivate other women. So because it's like we don't get that a lot and we go through a lot of stuff growing up. We deal with a lot of um, kind of like BS growing up and no one really believes that we can do it on our own and we we can hold it down on our own yeah. and you know we are females in business too and i want to be able to motivate women to get that confidence to regain that confidence um whether you're in the in the adult industry when whether you're working a nine to five it's still okay whether you're you have your own business it's whether possible. you're fully you know 100 percent just a power lifter yeah. everything is possible so that for me is more towards women um but yeah, that was that was my goal to just mentor and coach women that they can, you know, whatever you think is impossible actually isn't. That's a good one. That there we can't say anything after that. What you're gonna have you're gonna have to stay tuned for the <laughs> yeah tongue tied because dude that just like it was just like damn. But let's just take our toast to life because if we give too much to everybody, we we can't. They gotta stay tuned because there's a lot coming. There's still a lot coming, actually. Yes. And not just on our podcast and our channel, but on yours and everything you got going on. Mm -hmm. Because from what I've seen and what I hear and what me and Brittany already heard, your podcasts are something to very <laughs> much tune into. <laughs> but with that, dude, let's take our last shot, a little toast to life. But, dude... To much more success yes. and to success in 2021 and self-love, self-confidence and damn, I don't know what else, but here he is. <laughs>